Hello everybody and welcome to this WebEx meeting in our Corona Sales Training Initiative. Today Mike Hals from Topworks is presenting the Go Switch product. Let's start, Mike. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so quickly I'll just, um, as within all their training, I'll go over a quick safety moment. Um, and this safety moment is, is with regards to reducing stress. So I know in, in recent times we've, we've had some um, challenging issues um, that obviously could increase people's um, stress and anxiety. Um, so it, as we know, it's extremely detrimental to your health. Um, and, and what we need to do is that a lot of the time is to, is to speak out if, if things are um, giving you issues and reducing the stress can, can improve your physical and mental health. So really, it, it's just a message to speak out. Um, as you say, the, these challenging times give us um, different anxiety and stress levels and uh, speaking out obviously helps in, in a lot of these cases. So, so the presentation today, what we're looking at is, is the Go switch. Um, normally, this presentation is a lot longer. Um, so I, I am going to be quite quick in, in what I'm presenting. Um, and obviously what we will do at a later stage is it's especially with this type of training a face to face is is the best way to present it so what what is a go switch so a, a go switch is um when we think about switching technology um the go switch is really a, a solution for harsh hazardous high temperature low temperature arduous environments um, so it's a really versatile switch and it, the design itself has been around for us for 70 years now and, and we have examples of, of where this installation has been in place for 40 or more years and with the current design. The current design hasn't changed much over that period of time. It, it has had improvements, um, but the general concept remains the same. So the basic function is it, it, it's a hybrid solution. Um, so when we talk about hybrid solution, uh, we're mixing a couple of technologies. So um, a lot of people refer to this as a proximity switch. And the definition of a proximity switch is a switch that senses something within the proximity of the switch itself. And traditionally, a proximity switch is a sensor. Um, so the important aspect to, to, to understand is that with any other type of proximity switch, um, what you need is you need additional power. So you need power to control uh, the proximity switch. Ours doesn't require power. Um, so it's a combination of, of mixing um, the proximity sensing that you have with the proximity switch and also a dry contact and no power that you have with a, um, a typical mechanical switch and combining the two to give you a solution. And, and that's why we call it a hybrid solution. So again, I'll go through some of the features and benefits. So first of all, um, when we talk about proximity switch, um, it only works with ferrous objects. So without a target, um, then what you'll need is you'll need the material to be a ferrous material. So a ferrous material is one that contains iron. Uh, so these are typically um, ferrous materials. So some stainless steels, but not all stainless steels. Um, and as opposed to the non-ferrous items, so your aluminium, your copper, your tin, your bronze, um, those items are, are not detected by um, the go switch. But again, to, to give you an overview, with, with any other target or, or any other type of sensing, we can use a target and, and that target will, will activate the switch. So it's a dry contact. So it's um, a set of physical uh, contacts that can either form an open or closed circuit. So again, it doesn't require any power and the power consumption on this device is, is very, very small indeed. Um, so even when it's connected, it doesn't consume any power. So when we look at some of our uh, traditional internal functions, so a mechanical switch is, again, that's another dry contact circuit. So the target makes physical contact with the lever arm or push button on a switch which operates a set of dry contacts through gears and mechanical movement to generate a signal. Um, this is one of the areas where a go switch sits very nicely. Um, one of the issues that you have with any type of mechanical switch is the mechanical lever arm. This constantly has to be adjusted because over time it wears. Um, and also this is a fatigue point. 
So um, over a number of cycles, this will actually fail. Um, so, you know, it, it has a limited life. So when we're looking at solutions where if your customer has a mechanical switch in place, then the go switch fits very nicely in this area. The other type of sensing that we have is inductive proximity sensors. Um, so this is a solid state circuit. Um, so again, what we need is we, we need actually power to operate the switch. So without power, the switch doesn't operate. Um, and there's different types of this solid state circuit. Um, a common one that, that we probably use within the pneumatics industry is a Hall effect. Um, and that's an example of an, in, uh, an inductive type switch. And then finally, we, we have a reed switch. Again, um, this, is a, this is a dry contact circuit. Um, the magnetic object uh, attracts um, the, the reed switch. Uh, and again, we'll go over some of the features and benefits of air switch against this technology. Um, but then this is this this is a common solution that we see uh, against air go switch because one of the unique features of air go switch is hermetically sealed, and that's to a specific UL standard. And that UL standard states that it has to be glass to metal sealing. Um, so our go switch is in in some cases is, is hermetically sealed to this standard. Um, and as I say, we a lot of competition we have is a reed switch, but we'll go over some of the features and benefits that we have against the reed switch a little later on. So as you can see, the, the, the typical functions is the target comes along and attacks or hits the, um, the lever arm. This can be a lever arm, a whisk or a button, um, but it makes physical contact, which is an important point because when anything makes physical contact, there is obviously a number of forces developed in terms of friction and, and equal and opposite forces, and over time it will fatigue. Whereas a proximity switch, um, there's no contact. So looking at the two different families that we have um, within the goal switch range, we have the extended range, which is commonly referred to as the square switch. And we have the precision range, which is commonly referred to as the precision sensing. Um, again, we're not going to go into too much detail, but the most important thing with, within this product is that internally it has um, limited moving parts. So uh, a traditional switch has something like a spring um, to return it back to its, its normal position. Um, and the problem that you have with the a spring is it has a limited life. Again, it's a mechanical object. Um, and over time that will fail. The unique feature within the Go switch is that it doesn't use any type of, of spring. So the way that we have equal and opposite forces is with magnets. Uh, and, and basically what we have is we have a large magnet and a small magnet. And because the large magnet has a greater magnetic flux, then what that does, it, it, it um, pulls it to a, a certain position in the rest position that the main magnet takes control and then what we do is when we introduce a ferrous object it interferes with that magnetic flux takes away some of the magnetic flux power from the main magnet and then causes the um the secondary magnet to, to basically be the, uh, the powerful magnet and, and causes the switch to react uh, and that's the way that all the the go switches work um so on, on this one, this is a, a seesaw armature. So as you can see, it's a seesaw effect that happens with the switch, and that's the way it connects. Um, and this is the 10 and 20 series. So this is the original Go switch design that was developed some 70 years ago. Moving on now, we look at um, the next model, which is the Series 80. And um, this was developed in the 1980s. Um, and it's a different type. So the, the, the sensing area on this one is on the top. And again, it works in the same way, a primary and secondary magnet. Um, <clears throat> but the seesaw op operation is in a different plane. Um, so again, there may be needs to use this one as opposed to another type of, of go switch. And finally, we move across to the 70 series, which was developed in the 1970s. Um, and this product is the precision range. So um, we'll talk about the sensing area a little later on, but um, this one works in a slightly different way. So this has um, three magnetic poles. <clears throat> um, and the sensing area is a lot more precise. So we have a smaller sensing area. So this is, tends to be used in um, 
precision applications and also in, in the likes of um, inside a, a switch box, which is another part of the Topworks family. Um, the goal switch is used inside there, and, and this is the one that we use in, in, in that sort of application. So again, if you need precise sensing, <clears throat> this is a switch to go for. So looking at um, the different aspects of, of the goal switch, and again, what we must stress out that this is this is really an industrial arduous switch. So um, one of the main things that we ask our customers is, do they have any switching issues? Do they have any switching problems, any switching pains? Um, because as we say, this is a real fit and forget solution. Um, this product is, is superior in its design. Um, the sensing distance on the extended range is anything from um, 6 to 14 mil on the standard without any uh, target. Um, the target is, is, is basically the magnet that we, we supply. And we can extend this to, to nearly um, four inches. So, you know, there's, there's a real extended range. Um, current um, capacity and some of our other switches that they're very limited in, in what current that they can deliver. Um, so with a typical switch, uh, proximity switch, that, that's really low amps um, because it's it, internally, it's obviously electronic device. It's susceptible to, to high current and it's also susceptible to spikes. <clears throat> so when we talk about spikes in some circuits, what you have is that you have an increase in the power that's delivered on a particular circuit and that can cause problems, especially with a proximity type sensor. Um, a reed switch, this, this has a little bit more of extended area, so it can work in a higher ampage. Um, but the, the main feature um, within current capacity on a goal switch is it's got a massive range. Um, so this is similar to a mechanical switch in what we can offer. So again, as you say, something to replace um, a mechanical switch. These are the ideal solution. Um, and it's very versatile. Um, when we talk about switching technology, you, you have things like um, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, which is a way a circuit connects. And, and we have solutions that we can offer with a goal switch. <clears throat> and again, predominantly those those are sensing, but we, we have the circuitry to, to be able to give you that that circuit without the need for a for um, additional sensor. We can do AC, DC. We can do normally open, normally closed. We can offer two or three wire solutions. And again, with a lot of other switches, what you need to specify is, is what current is being delivered. Um, especially with read switches, um, you have to actually specify what material because if it's a low current, <clears throat> then you can't use a tungsten type. And if it's a high current, you can't use a, a rhodium type. Basically, if you're looking for standardization of a switch across your range, the goal switch offers this. It, it does all of these sensors in one device. Um, so, you know, that, that's again, that's a real feature of our product. Hysteresis, so a lot of us are pneumatic minded, so we understand um, the terminology of hysteresis in, in pneumatics, but within our product range, obviously the, the sensing area, as we mentioned, is, is between, um, you know, um, six to 14 millimeters. On, um, on the extended range. Um, but then what we have is, is that's when the sensor comes on. Um, when it's actually on, then we have a, a little bit of um, more length for the item to come off and, and that's known as the hysteresis. So obviously what we're saying is that just bear that in mind that there is a small hysteresis within our product so that when the object comes on, if you have a product that needs to have four millimeters, um, which may be the minimum sensing range, you have to account for the hysteresis. So it, it may be that you need to um, to move the switch back in the installation to, to achieve what you need to achieve. <clears throat> this just gives you an overview. The, as, as you mentioned, the target is actually a magnet. Um, and, and we do really recommend that they don't use any any type of magnet. These, these are precision made magnets and um, Again, there's a, a lot of um, sort of philosophy out there that believes a magnet will lose its magnetism over time. Um, that is correct, but the time is, is hundreds of years. Um, so unfortunately, we'll be gone from this world before the magnet shows any deterioration. Um, 
Uh, and you know, there's there's not many products that will last over a hundred years, so it's not something that that's an issue. Hi, Mike. Yeah. Excuse me. There is a, a question in the chat. Hi, Mike. A question to improve the the configurator. Is it possible to add the matrix informations? not an inch or foot on the go switch configurator, not only on our presentation. It would be easily to make a choice. Okay. Yeah, that's something I'll go back to the team. I think there may be some uh, some of the go switches that may, may have that information, but that's correct, yes. we. That's a good point. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so it's, it, it, it's just an overview of, of the targets there. <clears throat> so again, Important things to take away from this is that the extended range is obviously for um, extended sensing. So when we think about extended sensing, the sort of applications that we're thinking of is machine guards, um, that, that type of thing where um, you need the door to be shut, but it doesn't matter if the door is slightly misaligned um, as long as it's, it's connected. Um, and, and that's uh, comparable to where mechanical switch is used especially machine automation so this gives you a solution for for those um again the the pressure rating that means that the the um the switch can be installed in um high pressure applications um but it can also be submerged so obviously when you're putting something under the sea um it obviously is sub uh, it's subjected to pressures switching frequency um this is an important point to remember although the product is, is used for switching. If it's a really fast switching operation, um, then you don't. You, it, it's not suitable for really fast. Anything greater than 10 hertz, we, we, we have some problems to, to measure that. Um, we standardized recently on the enclosure materials. So historically, we used to have, um, you may see some black um, sort of ones out in the field, some black colored girl switches <clears throat> and some different materials. We've standardized our materials now, so we offer um, a standard material, which is a stainless steel, and we also offer a 316L stainless for, um, again, that, that may be specified by some customers. So moving on um, just to the um, precision range. So the precision range of sensing, that that is uh, a lot more precise. Um, we're working between one and 2.5 millimeters without any targets and extending the range out to 13 millimeters um, so it's well feel immune <clears throat> so it's not susceptible to large magnetic fields so there's some applications that, that use large magnetic fields um, some of the um, sort of um, suction um, areas that, that they they susceptible to large magnetic fields um, Again, some of the features and benefits of this is that it can work at very high temperatures, so 204 degrees Celsius, slightly higher than the, um, the precision one. Again, if you've got an application perhaps that's susceptible to, to those temperatures, <clears throat> we have a solution for this. Uh, if it's close to somewhere like a, a kiln or um, a furnace, again, you, you have um, doors on furnaces, and although the internal temperature can be a lot higher than this, um, the, the radiating temperature can reach up to high um, Celsius. And typically with a proximity switch, over 100 degrees Celsius, it doesn't perform well at all. Um, it, it, it's susceptible to being hit by the, uh, the hard fluctuation in, in temperatures and, and doesn't work well. So looking at some of the switching technologies, and again, the, the standard form that we have is single pole double throw um, <clears throat> so this is an example of a single pole double throw so you you have a normal circuit that connects which is the normally closed circuit again normally closed and normally open means something different in pneumatics but um, a normally closed circuit means it's connected and then moving across to the normally open side uh, and that's the way the function works and when we look at this the, the different types there's a form c form a which is normally open and a form b which is normally closed and especially with the mechanical switches you, you have to specify what type of form you need <clears throat> with their ghost switch you don't need to specify double pole double throw this is connecting two circuits simultaneously 
Um, and again, especially with the hermetically sealed design, um, we're the only ones that can offer a true hermetically sealed double pole, double throw solution with the go switch. Uh, make and break, not used very often, but as you can see, it, it's basically two circuits connecting or disconnecting. Um, and latching, again, I'll give you an overview of the latching. Um, within the pneumatic range, we, we have latching circuits, um, and this works in a similar way. Um, <clears throat> so the way that it works is that the contact comes into place, the circuit is made, and then when the contact is removed, the circuit is still made. This is, the, this is what we use on our safety share solution, because again, because the product doesn't consume any power, it can be connected to a, a wireless device um, and be installed in there. And because a wireless device tends to ping over a period of time, um, it can be that connection is lost normally, um, but we're still delivering that signal. Um, so again, we use this on safety showers. So when a safety show is activated, we, we send a signal. Now to, to be able to undo the latching, what we need to do is we need to bring um, a target into an opposite area to the sensing area and that will reset it. <clears throat> so it's very similar to what we have with in their pneumatics on a latching circuit. But there is applications where this is, this is used and uh, ideal for that application. A bit on the, uh, the connections, we can have um, all types of, of connecting, depending on where the switch is located, you may need to have um, behind the sensing area to the left of the sensing area to the right the side to the bottom. Again, these are all configurable within our um, product range. <clears throat> Wiring options, uh, we have the options of quick disconnect um, and we have a, a number of different cables depending on what circuit or what environment it's being used in. So high temperature may be a different cable to low temperature may be a different cable to um, an intrinsically safe circuit, etc. <clears throat> but again, an important thing to, to mention is that we can do any cable length. Um, typically, that they need short cables, but there may be some applications where they need a lot longer cable, and that's something that we can do within our range. Global certification. Again, because we're part of um, Emerson, we, we have global certification across the world. Um, the product's classed as a simple apparatus, so again, in some circuitry, <clears throat> Um, you know, that that's considered as a simple apparatus. So there's an international standard and a North American standard that, that requires this. Um, yep, so global certification, again, much within uh, a lot of our other product ranges within the FLMC, we have the global reach and global support. So looking quickly at some of the applications, so this is the 52M. So this is an M12 connection. So again, if you've got a proximity switch that is M12, this will fit directly in the same area. Um, with, a, with a certain type of quick disconnect, it can be rated up to IP69K. Um, and that's obviously related to the way that you connect the device. Um, it is capable of doing that high rating. Something that we, we have in our range, but it's not used very often is is a pneumatic um, go switch. So again, it, it's limited in what we can offer. It's, it, it's very low pressure four bar, but there may be some circuitry that needs to have this um, sensing available. High temperature, again, as we mentioned, we're right up at the top end. With some of the other switches, they tend to fail at this area, but with a high temperature switch, we can go up to 205 degrees Celsius. Submersible, again, with the right type of connection, we can go right down into the, to the bottom bottom zones <laughs> of the ocean. Um, typically, we, you know, the, the go switch is, is used at, at, at short, um, short depths, but yeah, we have the possibility of going right down to the bottom of the ocean. So again, things like um, FPSOs, which link down to the bottom of the ocean to connect to, to and valves we're able to sense that led led indication we've got the uh, ability to offer green and red leds or green and red for open and closed cylinders again this is uh, an application that we um 
we have had some, some success with the Eventix range, um, because obviously with the Eventix range you offer the F the NFPA A cylinders, which are, are basically solid ends. So we're able to use this device. Um, so it, it it basically is the end of stroke sensing. So again, another application where this is used is hydraulic rams and hydraulic rams on die casting applications. Because with the die casting application, you have the pressures, the high pressures inside the, the ram, uh, and also you have the heat. So again, because our device is not affected by heat, it, it's an ideal solution for that type of application. Nuclear qualified, um, again, we have a full range of nuclear qualified products. Um, what to bear in mind is any nuclear qualified product that you're promoting or you're quoting gets involved at the very early stages. This is not like a normal sale. If you're not familiar with this, it, it needs a lot of um, a lot of documentation and, and we need to ensure that we, we're quoting the right device. Um, but yeah, again, when, you, when you're talking to people about how good is the, is the goal switch, well, it's nuclear qualified, so that means that it's... It, it's been certified for 106 year qualified life. Junction boxes, again, we were able to offer them with a junction box and different types of junction boxes to certain standards. Uh, and not forgetting the mounting, um, within uh, the product portfolio, we, we, we have a number of um, solutions to offer. And we also have a department that's dedicated to designing new designs. Um, <clears throat> so we've got, a, a standard amount of, of mountings that are available. Um, these are obviously in the catalogue and we can custom make to a, a customer's requirements. Accessories, we've got a range of accessories. This this I really like, which is the ATK72 demo pouch. It, it contains a cutaway of the two different types of go switch. Um, and if you have a need, I'd highly recommend that you, you have one of these um, in your portfolio. Um, we have a, a small number available, but if, if, if you have a, a greater need, they're, they're available on the DPM. Um, but in any case, whatever you need, just get in contact with me and you're more than welcome to um, to borrow these for, a, for however, however long period you need. So I've got all of these on display uh, available to be sent to you. Again, we I have a YouTube site. Um, so this is the YouTube channel. So please have a look. There's some uh, examples of, of the Go Switch demo um, and lots of examples of our product range. So please have a look if you have time. Um, looking at um, the way to sort of select our product. So this, this is a quick overview. So um, the sensing characteristics, we spoke previously about extended and precision as the two different types that we offer. And then this goes through a number of questions and answers and, and points you towards the range. So not being able to, to be able to specify a range, this gives you an idea of what to quote. We also have the configurator. So this is the online configurator. Uh, this is a fantastic tool. Uh, I recommend that, that, that anybody go and have a look at this and, and you're not going to break it. So, you know, it, it's, it's definitely worthwhile to, to go and see this. And the biggest benefit that we have for our customers is at the end, whatever it will go through a range of questions, much the same as, as what the um, PowerPoint just explained. Um, <clears throat> and it'll give you ideas of, of, of where to, you know, select a, a preferred option. And at the end, you have this, which is a, a data sheet. So the real thing on this data sheet, it gives you everything that the customer will need. Your wiring diagram, your dimensions, everything related to that. So we also have online, we have um, within DPM, we have the, the product catalog. Um, and this just shows you basically how we make up a product. Um, it's a configurable product. So you select all the options um, and at the end of it, it gives you your part number. <clears throat> so this is your order code. And then you can go into DPM and check the pricing, check the availability there. But as you mentioned, the data sheet is, is fantastic. It gives you the part number, the specification, the wiring diagram. Very important is, is also with the um, the documentation, this is the nameplate that will appear on your product and everything's there. <clears throat> so it gives you um, the certification. And also if, if you put that into Google, um, 
it'll give you the actual search. So if you copy and paste that ATEX search, just put it into Google, it'll give you that uh, information. Um, the serial number is sequential, um, and, and basically the number is uh, the year, the month, the day, and the time it was manufactured. So that I think that completes what I wanted to go through today. Um, I think I'm just on time. As I say, it was very fast and very quick. Um, but what we would like to do, if, if there is any interest, is that we'd like to give you a more um, formal presentation, especially a look and feel presentation um, at your site. Um, because it really is that, you know, it's it's a very specialised product um, and, and needs to, to be fully um, seen to be appreciated. So, Helmet, I think that's just maybe a little one minute over time that we suggested. Um, is there any more questions in the chat? I don't know if I've had a chance to see that. Yes, yes, Mike. Thank you for your presentation. There are two questions remaining in the chat. So, one is from Jürgen Ehmann. Mike, which hysteresis occurs on the different models? Is there a percentage of the sensing range or individual? I can't see the values of hysteresis on the data sheets. Okay, yeah, so it, 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 it is different ones on it, each ones, uh, and it also relates back to what target you're using. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll get you some information regarding that, uh, Jürgen. Um, to see what what the I th it, it's basically against um, a millimeter, um, so that so, so there will be a value for that. So you, it, it depends. It can be a percentage or a, a millimeter value, but I will get that information for you. Just to add to that as well, Mike. Sorry, it's Mike speaking. Um, it also depends on which axis you're bringing your target in from. So depending on which axis you're moving on, there's a different hysteresis on each axis. So. Um, it's probably dependent as much on, on the model number as the application as well. Yeah, I think obviously if you have if you have a customer that needs that information, it's specific to everything. I think one of the reasons that we don't put it on there is, as like Mike says, there's there's too many things that influence it. So, yeah, so we'd, we'd have to have a data sheet and then another data sheet to explain uh, the hysteresis. But yeah, if, if there is a a specific uh, application that you're looking at we can, we can give that information but generally I'll, I'll try and find out if there is a um a known figure or a, a known idea of, of of what that equates to thanks mike okay thank you mike uh, and the last and final uh, question is from attila banto is there any mounting bracket adaptation needed to install GoSwitch on the valve uh yes there is um what we have is we have a range of bracketry that we've we've got in our price book um so we've got a number of solutions that we we can offer so if it's for example if it's a fisher 667 actuator that you're trying to connect to then we, we've got that um that documentation available but then if it's if it's totally new application um again we, we we've got um a sort of data sheet that we can send to you uh, and that gives us and you to give to your customer all the information that we would need if it's a real out and out special. But again, as you mentioned, the VIP team have got some two and a half thousand examples of, of solutions. So it may be that we've already had a solution to, to suit that particular um, actuator or valve or whatever you're trying to put together. So again, just reach out to, um, to the Topworks team if you have any um, VIP or, or, or solutions that you need to fulfill, um, and we'll be more than happy to assist you. Okay, thank you again, Mike. Uh, thank you the, for the participants, for your attention. Uh, there are no more questions asked in the chat, so have a nice day and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.